guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are finally, finally working on the Sweetheart Roadster again. You guys have been giving me hell, and I love it because I have not been working on this car, and believe me, I want to work on it more than you guys want to watch it. So finally, we're back on it. The last video, I think major video we did on the car is where we did the driver's side cow panel. Pretty involved panel where I made a die for rolling the the bead in the bottom of it and make it a pattern and figure it all out. Well, this time it's a little bit easier because we're gonna work on uh, doing the passenger side, but I already have a pattern, already have dies, so it should be able to get it going pretty smoothly since I can use all of those pieces. So we're gonna work on getting the passenger side cowl panel made, welded in, and then finally we will have a front cowl section that's pretty darn solid and it's starting to look really good. So we're gonna show you the process along the way. All right, so we got my, uh, my pattern we had from the last time we did the other cow side and uh, trying to decipher what's going on here. We held it up to the other side and it looks pretty good. And the nice thing is uh, we can just flip this over and it'll be the correct side that we want. So I'm um, gonna just roughly mark out where we want it to be for now so we can cut it out even closer. Here. There. All right, let's probably get rid of all this trash. practice. I'm just getting tired. I feel I haven't done sheet metal work in a while. That's top. That's there. So this should be backside because this was the Start putting some sheep in it. All right, so we're digging through our my sweeps here to get kind of the right shape. We found one that fits the door pretty pretty darn good. And other than where the door has a lot of damage, it fits good. But we can see that the shape of the that the shape of the door matches here all the way to about right here where the panel starts to dive in real hard, which I kind of knew already. Um, but what we're seeing actually now is how bad the door is down at the bottom as we go down. The gap gets pretty bad in here. 
So, uh, but this is our, our sweepy one, so we're gonna try and put our panel for the other side. I was lucky enough that this panel on the car when we started on this side was pretty decent, so I shaped it to match that. Uh, now we're trying to match this panel, so we got this sweep here that matches the door, so we should be able to kind of have something to go off by, and I'll make some marks so we know about where the, where the panel starts to sweep in real hard. But we'll use this for our reference along the way. But like anything, you get used to the, the feel of the wheel and stuff. And I'm sure if you were trying to make a bunch of the same part, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here soon, I'll be back on using it all the freaking time. All right, so I can't remember how to set up my bead roller, how I made these dies I made, because it was so long ago, we've done like 18 projects, so. Should be able to run our panel through. I did a bunch Checked out the Iron Trap video just to see how uh, that guy did it. My time and, and I can remember how it oriented through. the panel. The way I designed this. It's pretty funny. Um, but I gotta take, <laughs> I gotta take one of my washers out here, and I couldn't remember if I broke the line first or, or if I uh, ran the, the bead first, and we watched my own video, which is pretty hilarious. But uh, it works. It's a good good thing about documenting everything. So now we can roll this. I'll break the edge. So I'll take this washer out so it's the same as last time. We will do it again. Deja vu. All right. So if my video is right, I just got to roll this bead, and if it. If it doesn't work, then we wreck everything we did tonight. Once I get it going, it Pretty well. Like hook the corner hooked right in that. Mm. It's a little scary because you're blind the whole time. But all right, so we got the panel, uh, the bead run in the bottom. We we bent, we broke the edge in the brake, and then I ran the uh, the body line here on the bottom with the die that I made a while ago. So now what I'm working on is getting the edge. So we need to break this edge inside of the um, inside of the door jam here. And the way I welded it is I left some of the original door jam and I basically welded it like right in the corner. Uh, that just for me is a little easier to finish it out and make the repair hidden. If I would weld it on this side of the panel out here, you're gonna get a lot more distortion because the panel is gonna get some heat is gonna go out into here and you're gonna get a little bit of warping out in the center of the panel. So I, anytime I could stay away from the center of a panel, some guys are able to do it. Just you gotta know your own skill level. And for me, it's more safe to 
uh, have a broken edge and weld it in this corner here because it's really strong after the broken edge and in the corner. So I can cut it right in this corner, weld it down in there. We can finish it with like a little mini, um, lit little mini sander in here you'll never see it and even if there is some little bit of imperfections it's in a door jam where for a car like we're building it's not a grand national car or something like that you'll never see it it's great for me so that's the plan but what i need to do is kind of transfer the uh shape of the door jam here because i need to roll this edge over with this panel and i don't want to just assume where it's going to be at so i made the panel larger than it needs to be my pattern was accounted for that and I want to make sure that I have this, uh, this set here. So the way I designed this panel originally in the, the other video um, is pretty smart and all joking aside, it was really nice to have the video because I could see how I did it. So, um, so what I, the way I made it is it fits on the frame here. This is how I want the car to be. I want it to look like it is a Model A that came with a 32 frame from the factory. Like the way everything fits, I want it all to fit and be nice and flush. So this bend, the, the broken edge sits right on the edge of the frame. Um, and we're just hitting a little bit on the remnants down here of metal. So I can't get it to sit perfectly how I want, but it's darn close. But with the door off, now what I can do is push the panel in. Uh, it's got a little bit of shape to it, obviously from the wheel, so I just gotta give it a little, um, just a little hand pressure here. And I could slide the panel in. So I can either slide it in like this. I'm gonna cut right in front of this factory bead right here. And same idea, I'm gonna weld just off of that bead because it'll be pretty strong and it'll uh, avoid uh, some distortion. So I slide that back like that, that's pretty good. And I have a bunch of extra here. So what I can do now, kind of looking here, the original bead at the bottom here is kind of, kind of rotten. And uh, I left it on when we cut the panel out, but you know what, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. That's gonna be a real pain to weld. So what I think I wanna do is actually leave some of the bead on. So I'm gonna leave a note for myself to leave, um, leave the actual like bead section. So we wanna, we wanna leave that. So that it'll actually, the panel will get welded down here and then it'll cut over and weld down there because that's pretty crappy and it's gonna be really, really bad to weld. So I like to have as clean, much clean metal as I can to weld to. So that's just a little, little note for myself there. So, so what we'll do is we will leave the whole panel overlapping there because I want this bead to, I want that bead area. So we're gonna leave the whole panel on that edge and we'll just trim it back later. So what I can do now is and, hey Andrew, can you give me a hand with this? Yeah. So we're gonna scribe this panel across the top where we wanna cut it, and then actually on the other side. You can come around here. I just need you to hold this panel. Put your hand right in the center there, and just put pressure. Good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just kinda hold the panel with some help and I can scribe. All right, good. Yeah, it's good. Now we got our scribe for what we need for our bend here. Get all the way down and then actually the panel was junk here and just gone, so we gotta account for that. But um, we have enough here that I can just uh, kind of make the rest of the imaginary line and we know where we're gonna need to actually uh, bend this. So that should work out pretty darn good, I think. All right. Concert, they're, like, they're like nobody. Like Alright, so you got the edge bent. I trimmed the flange just a little bit. I could see initially it was gonna be a little a little long. So because of the way this bead is here and I don't have a um, pan and box and pan break, I had to just bend it some and then I'll hand hammer the rest. But I got enough of a break to start the edge and kind of get the idea of what we want here. 
Now one thing to notice when you break this edge here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna actually flatten the panel out a little bit when you put, because we have a panel that's shaped, when we broke this edge, it actually flattens the panel out where it needs to curve in. So right in here, um, I can hold the panel on. It fits pretty good overall, but down there at the bottom, it's, it's popping off right down in here. And up here's a little funny where it is there. So um, what's that, what happened is it kind of straightened the, the, the shape of the panel out. It kind of flattened it out down here. So what we need to do is actually, I'll use the shrinker stretcher in here and just shrink just a little bit to get it to kind of roll in and fit the frame how we want. Um, right down in here. So just give myself some notes as we're doing this. Actually it looks like in the middle here, I'm pushing on it. Somewhere here to here needs just a little touch and that'll pull this whole bottom edge in. And I think what'll happen is it'll start touching in here. So I'll probably have to do another right around the door hinge area, probably another just real light touch with the shrinker and then I'll pull that in and get the shape how we want and then I can just kind of touch everything up with the English wheel once we get this fitting but number one is get this edge to kind of roll in and get this bead which is probably the most important part of this whole thing is we want this bead to sit nice and flush with the rest of the with the car so once I get this fitting just a little better I'm going to cut all the mess of old metal out and uh, then we can scribe and get everything fitting really, really good. But gotta get this door jam just a little better. touched it and it's much happier. Looks to me like right there to there. So I, I shrank right here and then I shrank a little section right here to kind of pull it in when you shrink, grabs together and rolls it in like that. So it's fitting pretty good, but I can see it's kind of flattened here and it's not giving it the dive I want. So I actually think I really needed to shrink from um, where I started up here all the way down to here, but I like to be safe. So we're going to do right in this area, we're going to give another shrink. That should dive it in some more, and then we may just need to do a little bit at the bottom to get it. But I'm just going to basically from here to here give it a little roll in. All right, two more rounds of shrinking, just really lightly. And you can see, I just had my knee kind of holding the panel at the bottom there, just so it's kind of true to where it's going to sit. I got it sitting tight around the other metal and with very little pressure I can push it in and it's going to catch and it'll work pretty well. I just got to cut a little bit of this lip will have to get cut off eventually, but for now the key is I can, I can with very little pressure push this in and I can tell even with the other metal underneath of it, everything should sit flush once we got the other metal out from underneath of it, we'll be able to get it to be nice and flush with the outside of the frame, which is kind of the look I'm going for with how this is fitting the 32 frame. So now we can cut the mess away and uh, start getting this thing really fitting nice after I get the, all the junk cut off.
Oh yeah. Alright, so got a big giant hole cut in the car, obviously. Go out like that, there we go. So we got a big giant hole cut in the car. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I do. So you can see I cut with the cutoff grinder and I left just this little, you know, I don't know, quarter inch or so that I leave underneath of it. If you're really, really accurate, you can even leave an eighth. But I usually leave about a quarter inch or so somewhere in there, maybe down to an eighth, I don't know, whatever. I leave just a little bit under the scribe and then I like to cut it by hand. Um, the reason I stress that in all these videos is one of the big things over the years when I was just learning how to do this stuff, I used to cut it with a cutoff grinder and then try and fit the panel up and my fit up was usually crappy because you can never be that accurate with a cutoff grinder. And I always wondered why. And then I, you know, worked with a buddy that does a lot higher end work with me and saw him using the hand shears for a big giant panel. And he said, no, you got to cut everything by hand. And that's how I learned. So I'm going to take the uh, aviation snips and cut right along this line as accurate as I can. And then that should get us a pretty darn good fit up for our uh, panel here so I can start getting the final shape and fit up done on it. Okay, so I'm starting to get this all tacked up, and to be completely honest with me, jumping around doing this a couple couple days in between, the fit up isn't as good as it should be, but um, I should be able to make it work. So what I'm doing here is the panel fits really good and about halfway up here in this front corner, but uh, when we get out a little further, there's a little bit of a gap that's a little bigger than I would like. Uh, there's a couple ways you can attack this. So as you start tack welding, across the panel like this, it's going to start to shrink the seam on this side, uh, where it, not shrink, but it's going to pull together. So in some instances where your fit's really good, you have to be careful the panel doesn't overlap itself. Here, I want to allow it to shrink up and actually close my gap down. So my gap's really good here, and normally what you would do is you'd hammer on dolly on these tacks, and then that's going to stretch it out and relieve the pressure as you go. So what I'm going to do is just not even touch them and keep tacking as I go, and it's going to slowly start pulling it together so I can actually tack closer together in these areas uh, and it'll just keep heat shrinking and it'll pull this gap slowly up into itself and it will just that little bit that we need to close the gap to make it a little bit better it'll help us so when we're welding this up completely we don't have a huge giant gap that we got to fill which is going to put more heat into the panel and cause a little more distortion so I'm going to keep working across this way across this edge to get it to kind of close up and then we can work around the other edges and trim some stuff as we go get it to fit but overall it's starting to look pretty good everything's flowing in kind of how I want it to so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it overall it's just got to slowly work and tack all this up it's like the longest part of the process is doing the tacking and adjusting to make sure everything fits really good as you go so you don't have any crazy warping when you go and weld it
not bad. Little low spot right there we got to fix. That's about it. All right, so we got the panel all welded in like you guys saw, and then after I got everything sanded, looks pretty good, just quick hit it with the DA. I'm overall happy with it. Really happy with how it flows with the frame at the bottom here. But what I found is when I was clamping the panel, initially I made the mistake of not checking it real close, and I clamped right about here with my welding clamp, and I clamped it too tight and pulled everything in, and we had a little bit of a belly in the panel right about here. So uh, we pulled it out and I just worked it out. I have these little aircraft tools that are super handy here, um, little pry tools. And I used that to work the edge out. And what we basically got along the edge here is like a 332nd gap. It actually fits some 332nd welding rods, like perfect. So I'm gonna put that back in, but that took the belly out of the panel. We put the door back on, even though the door is really crappy. It, uh, it looks like it'll line up pretty good and everything should work okay. And uh, so I'll get that seam welded back up, but I'm glad we did that spot check. It only took a few minutes to take the cutoff grinder, relieve the pressure, and now I can just weld that little seam back up and uh, it'll save us putting a lot more mud in the panel than needed to when we get down to the bodywork stage. Um, so no better time than to do it right now and uh, get it done. All right, so what I'm doing here, like I mentioned, is I got a piece of 332nd filler rod. I don't like to go much more than that when I'm fixing a, a seam like this. Uh, if it's bigger than a normal piece of filler rod is, it, you're probably getting a little big and you should make a patch panel. Uh, but with this, it fits perfectly in my gap, which is just makes it a little nice, makes it a lot nicer. So what I'm doing is working down the seam here and trying to blend it all in. Uh, I got it all glued in, in here where the door uh, hinge goes. And then as I work down, I'm just gonna work the torch down and I'm basically kind of weaving it back and forth and just melting this filler rod into the seam and it glues everything together and makes it fairly flush when it's done in the end. Hardest part was right here in this corner where I had to get it like into the door jam. Uh, and that's, that's what I do with that. So we'll get a little magnet to keep it from flopping around. Go a little bit of time. I keep an extra piece of filler rod just in case it looks like it's getting hot and it's going to melt away. I can add that to kind of help me. Alright, so I went ahead and sanded the top of the cowl, the gas tank area, and we actually sanded the driver's side. So when I did the last paddle, like a long time ago, uh, I didn't ever weld, I didn't ever grind my welds. So after we got this panel done, went and did the other side, cleaned everything off, and man, it's really cool seeing just the top band all nice and clean. The cowl panel that we made for this side flows in pretty good. I had a little bit of drama there at the end where I just made a mistake clamping the panel in. It's fitting pretty good. We got rid of the big belly in the panel now so that we don't need to uh, do any major uh, bondo work in the end. So this looks good. The door is back on, but the door is obviously kind of junky. Uh, we can see the door just doesn't fit nice, but the cow overall looks really good. I'm happy with it. And I didn't go overboard with sanding all the welds. Just kind of blended everything in. It looks really nice. Um, and now we can move on to the next part of the project. So. The next part of the project that we're going to try and tackle, I think, is working on the firewall section. As I mentioned, I want to move the engine back just a little bit, so we need to do something about the firewall to get it so that we can uh, make some room for the engine. So I'm going to work on that next time, is getting the old firewall out and then working on what we're going to do with that, and then eventually we will slide the engine back and keep working our way around the whole front end here until everything's nice 
and solid and looking as cool as the rest of the car. So that's all I have for this one. Thank you guys for following along as always. We do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, Sundays. Make sure you subscribe. We're gonna be working on the Sweetheart Roadster pretty often. We're nearing the, uh, I don't wanna say completion, but we're on the home stretch for the Forgotten 39 Hot Rod. Andrew's uh, gonna be working on his uh, T here really soon. And who knows what else uh, for trouble and projects we will find. Thanks guys, catch you later.